right, everybody, my name is Judah, and welcome to the seven years later edition of how to do a radio microphone effect. Uh, so the original time I posted this, or the original time I made this tutorial, uh, was about seven years ago when I was about 14. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and that is not a uh, great tutorial by modern standards. Uh, it essentially is, it's just crush your audio until it sounds vaguely like a radio which is the effect most of the time because radios are just super crushed <laughs> sound that's really all a radio effect is and so now i'm going to show you how to do that but in any sort of daw audio workstation editing software uh even in audacity because the things you need to know to do that effect are standard in basically every audio editing software ever so let's get started so as you may have noticed, this is not uh, Audacity. This is actually something called Reaper. So Reaper, which you can download for basically completely for free uh, at reaper.fm, um, is just a super, super awesome audio and even video editing software. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a track uh, to record off of because I don't have a piece of audio that I want to work with. I'm just going to record my voice straight into the DAW or the program. Now, before I record this, you may be noticing I kind of sound like I'm already on a radio, right? And that's because I'm using a cheap-ish microphone. I'm using a HyperX something or other cloud flight. So that already kind of gives me the effect right out of the out of the gate. Uh, but we're going to try to make it a lot better uh, because this effect, while it might sound like a radio, it's not really going to fool anybody. Somebody's just going to think you you recorded your audio on like a $10 Amazon mic, uh, which is not a bad thing, but that's not the effect we're going for. Uh, but just quick disclaimer, if you do have a super high budget condenser microphone plugged into a mixer and all that stuff, you can still do this effect. Um, you'll just have to kind of tweak the settings slightly to, you know, destroy your sound <laughs> a little more than I will have to. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new track that we can record our audio on. So I'm going to hit double click. You can also do this with control T. You can also do this with right click, insert track. Doesn't matter. All the do the exact same thing. And now that we've done that, we're going to hit the little red circular button. And this is our arming track button, which as you can see now, our track is armed because audio is going through it. This means we can record. So I'm now going to hit the nice record button and do some talking. So this is our audio effect. Hopefully we can get a radio sound out of this. Cool. And there we go. Whoops, I did not want to do that. Let me just delete that. All right, cool, now we're good. Now, if you don't see the audio meter move, that means you might need to change your settings slightly. And to do that, we're going to go to Options, Preferences, and after you know 15 minutes, it'll open up a window. Scroll up until you see Audio, Go to device, and that, you know, will bring up all your audio devices. Uh, yours will probably be set to direct sound or wave out or even dummy audio. Um, minus it to ASIO. That's just something that allows me to work with audio a little faster without hardware, um, without proper hardware. But for you, just make sure that your input is set to the right thing, right? So make sure if you're using ASIO, enable inputs on, and this is set. By default, ASIO and all these other things will use the uh, default microphone on your system. So if you have multiple microphones, say like a webcam, make sure that the thing you're trying to record out of is set to default uh, in your system settings, <laughs> whatever operating system you're using. Uh, but for me, it worked by default. So if I hit play, you'll hear our audio and do some talking. So this is our audio effect. Hopefully we can get a radio sound out of this. Cool. All right, and there we go. So now we have something to work with. Uh, now to make a effect <laughs> we're going to add some effects to it so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on this track go to fx that'll bring up this little window that has a ton of stuff yours might not have as much i have some uh third party plugins and stuff like that that i've bought and downloaded over seven years um but don't worry we're not going to use anything we have to pay for so in our all settings tab click on cocos 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 however you say the creator of this program's name. Uh, and now we're going to just see all the plugins that come with the, prod, the program by default. Uh, 
So the one we're going to add first is a re-EQ, right? So that's down here. We're going to double click it. And now it's going to add the effect to our track, right? You can tell if the effect got added is if this turns green. If it's still gray like this, that means there's no effects on the track. Now we see this, right? This looks a little different. If you followed the original tutorial, you may have noticed that uh, we didn't have to do any of this, right? In Audacity, we just hit like effect, low pass, 800, okay. <laughs> and that was about it. Um, what that essentially did is if I'll click this, I will click low pass. And that was set to 800 hertz. Wow, is it really set that low? I can't even believe that. Uh, yeah, that's essentially all this did. Luckily for us, since we're using a graphical equalizer, this makes it a lot easier for us to, you know, click and drag and edit these around because these little nodes or these little points actually affect the audio uh, that the blue band sort of highlights, right? Or this blue little background highlights. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to give ourselves that sort of default effect on the radio. And we do that by cutting out some of the lows, right? And we're going to change that to a high pass. Now we're going to drag that towards the right a little bit. And you'll see that as we get to around 200 to 100, this starts to dip. This means that once we get about here, any th frequency below that number is quiet or silent, right? Anything that's above this is still audible. We can hear it. So try to think of it that way. Now, if you're going for a sort of 1920s uh, radio effect, you want to do this much higher. Because back in the 1920s, speakers and stuff like that couldn't really produce low frequencies that often or that much. And because of that, you got that really sort of 1920 sound. So if I drag up and I play the audio, you'll hear what I'm talking about. And do some talking. So this is our audio effect. Hopefully, we can... And that might be the effect you're looking for. Thank you for watching. <laughs> but uh, we're going to keep editing this a little bit. So for the effect we're going for, we're going for that sort of military airplane, you know, air traffic control or whatever effect. So because of that, we're going to drag it down a little bit because we still want some of that bass because uh, air traffic controller microphones and all that stuff and sort of the airplane headset microphones can still produce low-end frequencies and still transmit that, uh, especially, and you hear it especially when people talk and people, you know, blow air into their microphone, kind of like that old Xbox Live effect. Um, so we're going to keep it right about here, and then on our second band, which we saw here, we're going to drag that up at about three to 500. And now what we're going to do is we don't want it to to affect this much of an area. So we're going to change our bandwidth to a lower number, right? The higher it goes, the more we affect, the lower it goes, the less we affect. We want about right here. Now, if we play our audio, you'll hear it sound a little different. And do some talking. So this is our audio effect. Hopefully we can get a radio sound out of this. Cool. And do some talking. All right. So let's just drag this all the way up because we really want, we're going to crush this later. So we can kind of get a little, kind of get a little crazy with it. What we're going to do is we're going to drag that down a little more. I'm not super happy with the way I placed that. And we're actually going to play it and do it and adjust our effect as we listen. And do some talking. So this is our audio effect. Hopefully we can get a radio sound out of this. Cool. All right. And I'm, I'm happy with right about there. Now, you noticed whenever I dragged it up too much, we started getting that sort of phasery effect, like we're in like an old U2 like song or whatever. Uh, and to avoid that, just lower the gain slightly. All right, so now we're going to focus on the high end. So we're going to click on our high shelf three, drag it straight down, and move it to about, let's go about 1700. We can type it in here directly. And now let's play it and see what it sounds like. And do some talking. So this is our audio effect. Now let's drag it up get a radio sound until we're happy with cool. it. And that's about nice right there. And, and now what we're going to do is we're going to change our bandwidth to make this steep sort of ramp not so steep. Or to make it more steep. Sorry, <laughs> not so gradual. We're going to do about right there. And do some talking. So this is our audio effect. Hopefully we can get a radio sound out of this. Cool. That is starting to sound a little better. Now, if you look at this graph, right, or this this sort of blue band, you'll see that what happens is our audio is basically ignored from this point. Once we get here, we're boosting our audio, uh, kind of leveling out for a sec, boosting our audio, and then boom, ducking down. So everything here is now inaudible, right? And that's kind of what we want. That's generally what a uh, 
radio kind of sounds like. But we're missing one little area of frequency that we're kind of ignoring, and it's this. The key to a good radio effect is in the mid-frequency, because that's what gives us a lot of that noise and a lot of that rasp uh, that a lot of lower-end microphones have. So if you deleted one of your bands like I did earlier, we're going to have to add one. We can do that by clicking Add Band, and then I'll just make one wherever there's free space. We're going to drag that to around 1K, and we're going to drag it pretty high. And now we don't want this effect, uh, because this will just make it sound even. We're almost evenly adjusting everything in the mid. We're going to adjust our bandwidth down, because we want it to peak and to spike in one area of frequency. So if we play it and listen, we'll hear. And do some talking. So this is our audio effect. Hopefully we can get a radio sound out of this. Cool. And there we go. So, so far, so good. And remember, once again, do not want to drag that all the way up because then we start getting that phaser effect. But now we're getting to an effect that I'm actually liking, right? And we got this sort of smiley face effect or smiley face EQ. But we can do better than that. Uh, now we're going to go to add and we're going to type in comp. And you'll see something called recomp. Double click that. This is a compressor, uh, and essentially what this does is this will try to make all of our quieter bits of audio louder and all of our louder bits of audio quieter, essentially trying to level everything out. Now, of course, it's doing a little more behind the scenes, uh, but that's the basic premise of it, is it's just trying to make quieter things louder, louder things quieter, trying to even everything out. Now, how does this work? So what we're going to do is we're going to first drag down our threshold knob, and that essentially tells our compressor when to actually do something, because if we play and do some talk you'll see this little green bar come up that's essentially how loud our input audio is or our signal is we're going to drag this down until the green bar you know starts to come above it a little bit and do some talking so this is our audio effect hopefully we can get a radio sound out of this cool and do some talking so th and that's about fine right there about negative 30. uh this will differ from you know, recording to recording, because this recording is pretty quiet. So actually, I'm going to boost it up a little bit. Um, and so that'll change with yours. And do some talking. So there we go. That's fine. So now what we're going to do is we're going to up our ratio. And that is essentially tells the compressor how much to act on our audio, right? How much it needs to compress uh, our audio. Um, now, of course, this has its own meeting. So 2.37 to 1 has its own meeting. Uh, which, if you're not really interested in audio engineering, don't really need to care about it. Essentially, that is saying uh, how much it needs to have an effect on the input audio. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag our ratio up until we get the effect we want. Because our ratio being at 1.0 to 1 uh, means that we're really not doing anything to our audio. So let's do that real quick. And do some talking. So this is our audio effect. Hopefully we can get a radio sound out of this. Cool and do some talking so this is our audio and actually let's drag our threshold down a little more and do some talking so this is our audio effect Hopefully and as you can see it started to get a lot quieter especially when we got really loud about right here and now that is because it's trying to squish all of our super loud audio to be at the same level as our super quiet audio and that's why you've probably heard some of the uh, noise in the background of my mic come out as well uh, so that's the effect we're going for so far, but there's one thing we're missing, or actually two things we're missing. So the first thing we're going to do is auto makeup. That's essentially going to try to bring our audio back to zero, or the spot we want to keep it at. That's essentially all it's doing. It's just trying to boost our audio back up overall. And what we also want to do is affect the start and the end of our compressor, which we can do with the attack and release. So the attack is when the signal first comes over this little line, uh, about how long we want our compressor to take before it has its full effect, right? So if I drag this all the way up to 500 milliseconds and I hit play and do some talk, you'll see that it's very loud <laughs> for two reasons. Uh, one, we boosted it here, and two, we have auto makeup on. So let me quickly drag that down and do some talking. So this is our audio effect. Hopefully we can get a radio sound. And now, as you can see, this little red bar that was, you know, peaking really far down earlier is not really doing too much anymore. And that's because it's taking 500 milliseconds before our compressor can actually do its job. Uh, so we don't want to do that. We want to keep it pretty low, actually. Now, not all the way at zero, because then we'll start getting distortion and artifacting. Uh, but just maybe about default at 3 milliseconds or even, you know, 10 milliseconds. 
talking. So this is our audio effect. And now our little red bar comes back. Now the release is how quickly we want the compressor to stop working on our audio. So if I drag it up to here and I hit play. Talking. So this is our audio effect. You'll see that this bar takes a really long time. It's still going too, even though no audio is playing. And that is because I put on five seconds or 5,000 milliseconds. So it's going to take five seconds from when our compressor sort of kicks on. It's going to take five seconds for that to be back to zero or where it is now. So we don't want to keep it at that much. So we want to keep it at about, you know, 850. Uh, we can adjust it as we go along to see what we need. So let's play and then we'll adjust that. And do some talking. So this is our audio effect. Hopefully we can get a radio sound out of this. Cool. So this is after. I'm actually going to go on the lower end side of it because I don't want that much of a release. I kind of want it to still be punchy and the audio to kind of spike and, you know, do its thing. And now that we have done that, we're going to add one more EQ. So you can type in EQ, double click that. And now we will see that we have da -da -da -da, one more EQ. Now you may be thinking, why, didn't, why, are, why are we adding another one? We added one up here. What's the point of adding in a second EQ? Well, this EQ is processing our audio when it's raw, right? When it's in the raw, right? When we first recorded it. Uh, so it, think of it as water going down a pipe, right? So if w the audio started up here, figuratively, it goes down, 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 down into our first EQ. Our EQ does all this nonsense to it. And then it keeps flowing through till it goes here, right? And then our ER compressor does all the work to it and then passes it down here, right? So this audio that we're getting here is going to be very different than the audio this EQ got, if that makes sense. So what we're going to do to this to really tie the effect together and sort of quote unquote glue it together is we're going to dip down some of the lows, right? Because we are peaking pretty hard with because of our compressor. So we want to cut down some of those low frequencies so we don't have to worry about them as much. And do some talking. So this is our audio effect. Hopefully we can get a radio. And now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to kind of peak it at about six. And do some talking. So this is our audio effect. Hopefully we can get a radio sound out of this. Cool. So And now we're going to cut out some of the high end because as you can hear my fan that was in the background that's now getting boosted by the compressor is, you know, pretty loud and annoying. And do some talking. So this is our audio effect. Hopefully we can get a radio sound out of this. Cool. So this is after a little bit of quiet to show what happens when a compressor is doing its thing. All right, and there we go. So I'm kind of, I'm actually kind of happy with this effect so far. It, we are getting that phaser effect a tad, but that just means we need to up the higher frequency and bring up the mids a little bit. Now, before we move on to the the piste de resistance of the of the effect, uh, we need to do one thing, and that is add some artificial distortion to our audio. And we're going to do that by clicking on all plugins and then typing in distortion, right, or distor. And we're going to click on JS distortion. And now you should see a little effect come up. We have gain, hardness, and max volume, and then channel mode. Uh, we're going to leave that on left. Does not matter right now. Uh, but we're going to lower the gain before you start messing around with this for one reason, and that is because it's going to be very loud. And the way distortion works, you don't want to hurt your ears trying to listen to distortion. So let's bring it pretty safely down off the bat and, and play. Do, and do some talking. So this is our audio effect. And as you can see, that really sort of ties everything together. Now let's change it to stereo and see what that sounds like. And do some talk. And now that's the effect we're looking for. Now, uh... That's not super pleasant and would probably get pretty hard to listen to as we go on. So let's bring the hardness down to about a two. And do some talking. So this is our audio effect. Hopefully we can get a radio sound out of this. Cool. All right. And now let's just move that max volume down a little bit to maybe negative 20. And do some talking. So this is our audio effect. Hopefully. And there we go. So far, so good. Now I'm going to cl quickly click and drag this distortion to be behind our compressor so that way our compressor lowers the volume even more and do some talking so this is our audio effect hopefully we can get a radio sound out of this cool so this is after a little bit of quiet to show what happens when a compressor is doing its thing there we go so now we could sort of make the effect uh be a little more intense without you know hurting everyone's ears <laughs> so the last thing we're going to do and this is really the thing that ties our effect into the radio sound we're looking for 
is background noise. Now you may be saying, hey, wait a second, I can hear your computer fan, you know, going crazy in the background. That may be good enough for me. But if you have ever listened to, you know, air traffic controller, or even like old military, whatever, 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 you already know what I'm talking about. Uh, there's a lot of background noise in those really old microphones. So we're going to artificially add that. Now, the way we do that is we're going to make a new track like how I did. Go to FX and type in white noise. Make sure we have all plugins selected. Now we're going to make sure it's on JS white noise. Now, before you go going ahead of the tutorial and adding that, let's just bring our track volume way down, as you will see right now. <laughs> so uh, this is one thing I always forget to, to do whenever I add a white noise track. Uh, is turn it down because it is very loud and will, uh, you know, it'll jump scare you most of the time. So essentially what this allows us to do is artificially add white noise to the background of our audio. Now, we don't want to just have this as it is, you know, playing constantly because as you can hear, it's still playing and it's kind of annoying. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to convert this into audio like we have up here. And the way we do that is we're going to hit our record button on the noise track, right? And I'll rename that noise track. And we're going to click on this little thing that says in, right? Or record input or recording input. And we're going to go to record, output, output mono. Click that. Essentially what that allows us to do is record our track into itself, <laughs> if that makes sense. Uh, and now I'm going to drag this up. And you will, this will get quieter for you on your end. So this is just for your own sake. Uh, for me, it's going to be kind of loud. And after I do that, I'm going to just mute our original audio, hit record, and let that play for maybe five, six seconds. Uh, we don't need much. Once that's done, I'm going to hit save all, drag this down, which will make it on a new track, and then delete our original noise track. Now that my ears can take a rest of getting beaten by white noise, <laughs> uh, we can now work with our noise like audio. And so I'm gonna hit control or hold control and drag. And now that will just let me drag uh, the audio and copy it. Uh, these little crossfade sections right here allow it to, uh, if I drag that down really quick, allow it to smoothly fade in to itself without that being audible. So now that we have our white noise, if we play our audio and listen to our white noise with it, we'll hear something kind of weird. And do some talking. So this is our audio effect. Hopefully we can get a radio sound out of this. So now you might have noticed it does not sound very authentic, right? The white noise definitely sounds artificial and placed in the background. So rather than processing these two separately, where this has its own effects and this has its own effects, you could also group these tracks together and add the same effects to both of them, right? And we can do that like this. So if we put a track up here, we can hold shift and select these both, click and drag them until the blue line gets shorter. And there we go. Uh, now yours won't automatically color. That's a thing that's just in my setup that I had set up for to make it easier. Uh, let's actually change that color. That is so bright. Uh, there you go, it's a little nicer. So essentially what we can do now is click and drag on the effects That'll take, you know, 15 hours, and now we can disable that, and if we hit play, and do some talking. So this is our audio effect. Hopefully we can get a radio sound out of this. Cool. So this is after a little bit of quiet to show what happens with a compressor, and do some And there we go. So that could be the effect you're looking for so far, but there's one crucial little detail that we need to use to tie this together, because I actually like how this sounds so far, and that is to have the noise uh, be affected by our voice track, right? Because right now it just sounds like the voice, our noise is going under the voice track, right? Which is, nah, it's not that good. So how do we do that? Add an effect. We're going to add an effect to our noise track, right? So you can click that little effects button and we're going to add a gate. And now a gate works very similarly to a compressor, right? In fact, it looks almost exactly the same, uh, except a gate does not compress audio. So it doesn't try to make the audio quieter or louder. It essentially tries to cut the audio out, right? So it tries to silence audio, or it tries to bring audio in depending on what setting we have it on. 
Uh, so rather than it trying to affect our audio and compress it down, we're going to basically tell it to just slightly duck whenever uh, our voice track is being played or whenever our voice track has audio on it. So how do we do that? Well, first things first, click on our voice track, right? Now I'll actually label these just to make it a little easier. So click on our voice track where it says route. We're going to click that and drag that onto the noise track. This little weird window will pop up. Do not worry about this. Uh, all you need to worry about is going to where it says one over two. And now go to new channels on receiving track and then hit three over four. Close out of that and go back to the FX on our noise track. So if we hit play, uh, you'll see something happen. And do some talking. Or you'll see not that much happen. And the reason why is because in our gate, we did not tell it to use the routed input. The way we do that is we go to detector input, auxiliary input, L plus R. Now if we hit play. And do some talking. You'll still hear nothing. And that's because we haven't told our compressor, our, our gate, to do anything. So let's change the threshold knob like we do with our compressor and then hit play. And do some talking. So this is our audio effect. Hopefully we can get a radio sound out of this. Cool. So you might have heard a little bit of weirdness going on, right? Whenever my voice would just start to get quiet or when it would just start to get loud, it would start bringing in that background noise, which is good and bad. Uh, it doesn't give me the effect we're looking for or I'm looking for. Uh, so I'm going to go down here and hit invert gate duck right in the parentheses now if i hit play and do some talking so this is our audio effect hopefully we can get a radio and that is really the money maker right there so essentially what's happening is as soon as audio starts to play right or the signal starts to go into our gate as soon as that signal gets to above this little you know thingy this little knob or slider it says hey start to duck the noise, right? Start to make the the noise quieter, right? Right, we got we got the voice coming in to start to make the noise quieter on our track. <laughs> if that if that makes any sense. Uh so before we move on, uh I have it in a spot where I like it, but it doesn't sound too authentic. It really sounds like our voice is like cramming the the noise, background noise down, which isn't very realistic. So to fix that, we're going to work with these three settings, attack, hold, and release. So attack and release work the exact same way like a compressor, uh, but the different one is hold. So what hold will do is once our effect gets to 100% or the, the as much as it needs to do, it will hold that for the determined amount of time, so up to a second, uh, and then it'll trigger on the release. So we are not going to mess with that too much. We're going to put it at maybe like a couple milliseconds just more than zero uh, maybe five milliseconds and we want to adjust our attack and the reason why is because we don't want the effect of our noise ducking down to be so aggressive and that's how we sort of fix our attack or that's how we sort of fix that uh, so we're going to put that maybe about 25 to 30. and do some talking so this is our audio effect hopefully we can get a radio sound out of this cool so this is after a little bit of quiet to show what happens when a compressor is doing its thing. And do some talking. So this is our audio effect. Hopefully we can get a radio sound out of this. Cool. So this is after a little bit of quiet to show what happens when a compressor is doing it. And there we go. So that is our effect for the most part. Uh, I think that's a pretty good effect for for noise. <laughs> I think that is for, for, for noisy sort of microphone. Uh, if I can even speak English, <laughs> for a radio effect. Um, it definitely is better than just, you know, going effect, low pass, effect, high pass, amplify, over and over and over again until you get the effect you want. And the coolest part about this is it's reusable. So let's change, let's say, oh, I changed the lines I wanted to say. I wanted to say, uh, hey, whoa, what a cool day. What, what a cool tutorial this guy just made. He made a thing that is better than he made when he was 14. Right? We can do that. And now if I hit play. Hey, whoa, what a cool day. What, what a cool tutorial this guy just made. He made a thing that is better than he made when he was 14. And there we go. So now we have a completely flexible and easy use radio effect. 
that we can even save as a project uh yeah <laughs> that we don't have to worry about anymore we don't have to you know do the same thing over and over so take that 13 14 year old me uh, so hopefully you enjoyed this video uh, and if you haven't already give reaper a chance i highly recommend it uh, it is a really cool piece of software so have a great day guys and uh, see you later